Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the last wrap up of 2023. I can't believe we're already there and doing that and thinking about new reading goals for next year, but here we are. As always, the year's gone very quickly. Let's, let's wrap up the year with the last few books that I read. Firstly, if you can't tell from my voice, I've been sick for like the past week and I'm mostly better but still kind of a bit sick so my voice I'm really sorry it sounds extra nasally probably extra monotone than it normally does but that's ju that's just what we're working with today <laughs> hopefully it will go away soon because I'm not enjoying coughing constantly and being all sniffy but yeah I was I, just in case you were like, what the hell's happened to her voice? That's what's happened to my voice. Today we are looking at books that I read uh, this month and also last month. I have not read very much the past two months because uh, I don't I don't really know why, honestly. I just haven't. Um, been in a, a tiny bit of a, a slump, maybe. Um, so it didn't really feel worth it to do a wrap up last month. So I thought I would just combine both of them today and finish off the year with the last four books that I read um, over the last two months because like I said it wasn't very many. So the first book that I read this month was Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. So <laughs> I appreciate that this book has had a lot of, I don't know if controversy is the right word, but it's had a lot of split mixed differing opinions on it and the author herself has as well. So when I started reading it I knew that there were very mixed opinions on the book itself. I hadn't really seen all of the stuff about the author. I didn't find that out until after I'd finished this and read the second book because apparently I've just been hiding under a rock for a while. I will touch on that in a minute. But in terms of the actual book and what I thought about it, so in case you don't know, the world in Fourth Wing, there are all of these different jobs that you can do. I don't really know much else about the wider world because you were not really told but you can be like a scribe or a healer or you can be a dragon rider and basically the dragon riders are like the army in this book. Viola, our main character, has always wanted to be a scribe. Her dad was a scribe. She likes reading, she likes writing things down, she likes history, she's always wanted to do that. Um, however her mum is like the general in the dragon army so initially dad's like it's fine you can be a scribe but then her dad dies very sad yes very sad anyway and basically the book starts with violet's mom deciding that she is going into the the dragon school she's gonna learn how to be a writer regardless of what she wants learning to be a writer is very dangerous and a lot of people die during the training for it but i don't really understand why it has to be that dangerous but anyway and violet is portrayed and describes herself as being quite weak. Her bones break really easily. She's not very strong, she's really small. And I was reading afterwards, she's supposed to have um, Ellis Downloss syndrome, I how you say it. She's supposed to have EDS because that's what the author has. So it was supposed to be like representation for that. So yeah, Violet basically goes into this thinking, I'm gonna die. I just want to be a scribe and and that's the thing we follow then Violet through her trials and tribulations of being in the dragon rider training. When I first started reading this book I hate it. <laughs> I did not think I was going to finish it honestly and I very rarely DNF books in fact I don't remember the last time I DNF'd a book. I haven't DNF'd a single book all year. It felt so like 2011 this book when you first start reading it. Violet has such like female main character from YA fantasy in that era of vibes. She's weak, she's small, she's different, but she doesn't want anyone else to say that. She's gonna get really annoyed if anyone else points that out. And I just found her so unbelievably irritating. And also just her inability to take to not take any conversation about this very serious situation seriously. It just really bothered me. I did not like her and I did not enjoy the story at the beginning at all. It's established very early on 
that there's going to be like a bit of a love triangle, which again was something that immediately put me off because I don't like love triangles. I am not Pythagoras. And that was another thing that I was like, this is just The Hunger Games, but slightly different. It's literally what it felt like. I love The Hunger Games, The Hunger Games is great and did all of those things very well. But I feel like any other book who tries to do something similar, I'm not saying that's what she did, that's just how it felt to me. It doesn't do it well. It does get a bit better. I did start to enjoy it a little bit more as we went through, but it still just felt like a very meh fantasy that was okay. I don't personally really understand why it got the hype that it did because it's just okay. It's not fantastic, it's not awful, it's just okay. It was somewhat easy to read. The twist, or like the the thing that happens in it, I didn't see coming, admittedly. But again, all of that just felt very Hunger Games as well. So I don't really know what else to say other than that. It's just that it was okay. It wasn't groundbreaking. The, there's not, the dragons aren't really in it that much, which I feel like is a big selling point. I feel like the romance, like the love triangle thing was so unbelievably predictable and it was very obvious what was gonna happen there. Um, Violet's character does get a bit better, but she's still kind of just a bit annoying. And yeah, it was, it was okay. It was all right. Onto the author. <laughs> I didn't really know all of the shit. <laughs> about this author until after I would read the book and after I'd bought the second one. So I knew that people were very mixed on this book in general, but I thought it was just about the book. And then I saw someone on TikTok, I think it was, talking about how the author has borrowed a lot of, I think it's mainly names for things. Um, I can't, I can't remember there being any other like actual different language in the book. I think it's mainly just the names that she's borrowed from Scottish Garlic and she just can't, she clearly doesn't know anything about that language herself because she did the, uh, I'm gonna put the video down like in the description because this person explained it much better than I will but there's a video of her um like very confidently saying, oh, well, this is how you pronounce this person's name, or this is how you pronounce this, and it's all wrong. So she clearly did not do research into it properly. She just like stole it and was like, yeah, that's, I'm gonna use that. Which I'm not, I don't like that. I don't like that at all, especially because, because those languages aren't really spoken that much anymore, but they do have a lot of like cultural importance you know, in the in the countries that they're from and to people who have like actual heritage from that country. So it feels very much just like the classic thing of uh, Americans just being like, oh, that, that little thing there, I'm gonna take that and pretend that I know a lot about it and claim that, that it's mine, which bothers me. I don't like that, that really bothered me. The other thing that I keep that I then was seeing when I was like, cause I was, I was trying to find that specific interview or video and then something else came up. Rebecca Yaros had made some comment about a conflict. I can't remember which, uh, she'd said something and I couldn't find the original thing that she said. I could only find her like clarification or apology afterwards. Um, but she'd said something that did not come across very well. And then her apology or clarification was like, I hate all war. I, I don't like war of any kind. And her, bi her author bio in her own book, she doesn't like war. Rebecca loves military heroes and has been blissfully married to hers for over 20 years. That just makes no sense to me. It makes no sense. You can't hate war but then also love military heroes and, you know, just be happy being married to someone who is actively in the military. It just makes no sense to me. I'm not a fan of her from everything I've seen. I'm also not a massive fan of this book. So honestly, I think there's much better fantasies out there that you could read and I'm not recommending it. Basically, this book was okay, not great. Don't think it deserves anywhere near half the amount of hype that it got for whatever reason. But I know some people love this book, so 
you know, what, whatever, enjoy what you enjoy is fine. Changing the vibe completely, the next book I read was If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. Oh my god, I loved this book. I love this book so much. I'm gonna be completely honest, I could not tell you what this book is about because I read it over a month ago now, probably nearly two months ago, and I read it in one sitting <laughs> because it was so good and I could not stop reading it. I am definitely going to reread this at some point because I don't remember it very well and it was it was just all a bit of a frenzy to read it. To summarise this book as best as I can from my very limited memory, If We Were Villains is Dark Academia, a bunch of, as it always is, college students. They're all Shakespeare students, so they're all doing drama and it's like an elite little drama course that is quite specific and quite, I wasn't gonna say selective. It's like the Greek class in, in The Secret History, but for Shakespeare, it's not quite like that, but it's like a very serious, very difficult to get into like drama course at this college. And it follows six students. How many of them are there? Okay, there's seven of them in this group. And Oliver is our main character. He's the one we sort of see things through the lens of. And oh my God, it was so good. <laughs> I do remember it starts with our main character, Oliver, being released from prison after 10 years. And basically the police officer who had arrested him back in the day is retiring, I think. I think he's retiring. And he's never believed that whatever happened was actually Oliver. He's never believed that the case was actually solved. And just for his peace of mind, he wants to know what happened. He's not gonna tell anyone. No one's gonna get in trouble. He just wants to know what happened. So basically the book is then Oliver telling this police officer everything that actually happened and going back through the tales of his youth at, at uni. I very briefly said in my video about the secret history that this book was everything I was hoping and wanted the secret history to be. This book had great characters that I loved. They were amazing, fantastic, incredible. And just, you can't help but love them because this is a, a dark academia book where yes, as there always is, the characters are to a degree a little bit pretentious, but they're not pretentious enough that you don't like them. They are very likable characters for the most part, most of them. There's something you're not supposed to like, but anyway. The, the little group of friends, like, I think that's why I don't remember much of what happened, honestly, because it, it was just, I just cared about seeing these friends hang out and develop their relationships and stuff. It was really good. <laughs> this book made me happy, made me sad. It made me cry a lot. It gave me new fictional characters to adopt and cry over and think about a lot. I could not stop thinking about this book for a while after I finished reading it. And I know I'm not really saying anything of substance here, but it's because I did read it very quickly. And all I can remember is that I loved it and it was really good. <laughs> so if you couldn't tell I rated this five stars, I think this is probably my favorite book that I've read all year. But I might just be forgetting some other good ones that were in there. I would really recommend this. If you like the, the Dark Academia vibe but you find it too difficult to get into or if the secret history is too pretentious for you, or if you're more of an English person, and when I say English, I mean like Shakespeare, not like you're from England. <laughs> it's a really good book. Oh yeah, this is going on the favorites bookshelf behind me, definitely. Okay, I don't have the next book that I read because I read it on my Kindle, so wrong side. I'll put it here somewhere. So the next book I read was A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, which I've done a whole video on the plot of. I haven't done a video talking about how it felt about it, actually. But if you're interested in just knowing the entire plot of A Christmas Carol, then I will put a link somewhere, as well as down below, for you to go watch that if you're interested. Uh, A Christmas Carol, 
really surprised me, actually. So if you don't know, I have a very long history of hating Charles Dickens. And not as a person, because obviously I don't know him. I never met him. I don't know what he was like. But his writing. Now, I have, in all fairness, only experienced his writing through Oliver Twist. I went back and reread some of it recently because I'm planning on doing a video about Oliver Twist. And I found myself laughing at some bits. So I might be in my Charles Dickens era, which is interesting. I never thought I'd see the day, but A Christmas Carol is what started all of this. So uh, briefly, A Christmas Carol is about an old selfish man called Scrooge who hates Christmas, hates everyone, especially hates the poor. And he is visited by various spirits to teach him certain lessons about life in the hopes that he will change and stop being such a miserable old miser. That is A Christmas Carol. It's a very short story. It's only like a hundred and something pages. I really enjoyed this though. I did. There were, again, parts where I found it quite funny. Um, I think reading it this, reading Dickens this time, I did really appreciate more actually, after I've thought about it, uh, his descriptions of like gritty London. <laughs> In all fairness though, I like Turn Oliver Twist as well. I do always appreciate the way that Charles Dickens can describe the uh, less affluent areas of London in the Victorian era so richly and with such contrast to the more affluent areas. Uh, I don't know where I was going with that point. So yeah, at times it was funny. Uh, descriptions were, were to be as expected, but I still enjoyed them. It was quite easy to read, which has always been my issue with Charles Dickens, is that his books are not easy to read because he rambles and he'll have a sentence that lasts for like two pages and he'll insert himself as the narrator into things and it bothers me. But actually this was really easy to read. I got through it really quickly and I found myself wanting to keep reading it, which when I read Oliver Twist, I could not wait to be finished with that book. So it's it's a nice, easy Christmas read. It was it was good, honestly. And if you want a nice, easy Christmas read, I know we're kind of past that season now, but if you want a nice, short, easy story, or maybe an introduction to Charles Dickens, I would recommend it. Alternatively, if you don't want to read it, like I say, I've got a video explaining the whole thing, so you can go do that. That was a really short review, but it's a really short book, and there's honestly not really that much to say about it. It was good. It was four stars. It was good. Would recommend. The last book that I have read over the last two months is Portrait of a Thief by Grace D. Lee. I've been trying to think about how to explain or how to talk about this book, because my general feelings are conflicted. <laughs> A summary, Will Chen is a art history student, he works in a museum and one day uh, there's burglary at the museum, some art is stolen and he is given a business card by the thief as if to be like, I want to steal some art, let me know. <laughs> and essentially what happens from there is he is asked to retrieve five or six pieces of stolen art, art that has been stolen from China and is now in museums in the Western world and recover them back to China so they can return to their home. And he assembles a little team of other Chinese American people that he knows, all of them college students, all of them doing different things that could be helpful to this heist. It's supposed to be a heist book. They're stealing art. High stakes. This book seemed like I would love it. It's a heist book. It's about reclaiming lost culture, stolen things, trying to right the wrongs of countries conquering others. It seemed right up my street. It just, it, it really wasn't for me. And I've seen a lot of conflicting reviews about this book as well, actually. So I know it wasn't just me who felt like this. So firstly, here are the things I liked about it. So we have a range of characters from slightly different backgrounds, doing slightly different things, different relationships to each other. That was quite nice. Descriptions of things, writing in general at times was quite nice, quite 
uh, poetic or deep or whatever you want to call it. Um, and the premise was good. What I did not like <laughs> about this book was the characters, there's five different characters, right? All of them have different backgrounds, different relationships with China, different relationships with each other, but they all felt the same, all of them. Each chapter is from a different character's point of view, but it just felt like the same voice was talking every time. And eventually, you know, I could differentiate them, but it was it was quite hard to actually, even like halfway through the book, to be like, wait, which one of you is this? Which, what, what's your background again? Because they were, they were written in such a similar way. And despite all of them having very different histories and, and relationships with uh, China, all of their thoughts about it were the same <laughs> in terms of like their motivations for getting this art back or how they felt about doing that. All of them were the same. All of them had the exact same opinion and views about stealing this art and why they should and why they shouldn't and blah, blah, blah. Um, so they felt like the same person while reading them. Some of the characters were more developed than others, which bothered me because my favorite character was Alex and Alex just felt very forgotten and like the author didn't really care about her as a character as much. It felt like Alex's only purpose was to, uh, for a relationship subplot that was in it that didn't need to be in it. And honestly, I didn't, it was okay, but it wasn't developed very well in my opinion. Um, whereas I, but I thought Alex was like the most interesting character but she just like seemed to have got forgotten about the most. The writing became quite repetitive and this is something that a lot of people have said, was that, I mean, firstly, I was getting annoyed with the fact that every single chapter starts with like, Will Chen was doing this. Uh, I can't remember any of the rest of the names. Irene Chen was doing this. Blah, blah, blah. It, was, it just always starts with their full name and then what they're doing right then or what they're thinking right then. And it just got boring. It, it just got repetitive. And I knew whose chapter it was because it says at the top of the page whose chapter it is. So I just thought that was unnecessary. Other parts of the writing were also quite repetitive. Like, especially when describing people's looks, like I lost count of how many times I read the column of her throat or Oh, what was it like the curve of her eyeliner or the cut of his jaw I don't remember what it was but there was just certain descriptors and phrases that were just used over and over and over again and the same for like how they're describing the sky or the moon so well, the first few times you read it you were like oh that sounds really nice that sounds beautiful and then like after a few more chapters you're like okay yeah it's kind of lost its appeal now I get it it made it difficult to read, honestly. The actual heisting, so this is my biggest complaint. The heisting was shit. <laughs> like there was hardly any heisting. Their planning for it was unrealistic as hell. They watched films and read books about heists. Like that's like me being like, right, I need to break into a prison and get someone out. So I'll read Six of Crows and then I'll know what to do. Like it was, they're supposed to be, they're all at top universities. They're all really clever. And they're like, yeah, let's watch Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, that was silly. The heisting in general was kind of silly. And the general resolution to the problem was in my opinion, unrealistic. So unrealistic. So this is gonna be a spoiler as always. Go here if you don't want the spoiler. So essentially they stole two of the, the a piece of art they were trying to get back was Zodiac heads, like bronze sculptured Zodiac heads that were stolen from the Summer Palace. And they'd gotten two of them back, but then they, the FBI, which, let, why the FBI involved when we're robbing museums in, I think it was Sweden and France. Why the FBI here? Firstly. Um, but anyway, the FBI had figured out what they were doing. So they were like, right, we need to stop or we're going to get caught. So they decide they're not going to steal anymore. 
But then Will, who is like the main guy who's planning all of those, Will gets a job interview at the Met where there was one of the Zodiac kids. So he's like, right, one last tie, so let's steal this one. And admittedly, I, I didn't, I didn't see this twist coming. But what they do is they make it look like they're gonna steal the one from the Met, purposefully get caught, and then two of them access files to prove museums are buying and dealing in stolen art and they publish that and then after that museums just start giving countries their shit back which to me personally I don't think that would happen after one article bearing in mind everyone already knows you stole it it's clear as day that you've stolen this art they're not just gonna give it back. Hey man, uh, a while ago, a lot of your ancestors stole loads of stuff from my ancestors. Yeah, I'm here to take them home. Let's right this wrong. What do you say? They must have thought the British person at the door was gonna go, absolutely, you can have them back. We stole them after all. But instead, we went, I don't think so. <laughs> We're still looking at it. That bit in particular was where I was like, mm, no, I don't think that would happen, actually. Like, okay, yeah, it's quite a clever plan, but I don't think it would happen. The unrealistic heisting and just generally there being a bit of a lack of heist, more of it was just like, again, it was just very repetitive. Like you're supposed to be planning a heist and you're just staring at this girl and thinking about when you sat in a car with her. Like, it it was really disappointing because I really wanted to like this book and it seemed like it was gonna be really good. But it just, it, it fell really short, unfortunately. There is gonna be a Netflix show made out of it, which I probably will watch because honestly, I think it could work better <laughs> as a show. So we'll see. But yeah, the book itself, kind of disappointing. I can't remember if I said, I rated it 3.5. Three felt a bit too harsh. Four felt like too much. So we, yeah, we stuck with 3.5. That was all the books that I read over the past two months. So December and November. Like I say, I know it wasn't very many, but I've been in a bit of a, a bit of a slump when it comes to reading. So there we go. Let me know how many books you read this year. What your favorite book of the year was. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I think mine was, if we were villains, and, but we'll see when we talk about all my five star books. Um, but yeah, let me know what yours was. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed reading this year and I will see you soon.